Okay, well hello there YouTube. How's everyone doing today? I just came from uh, Home Depot. I had to go get the water filter for the old refrigerator. Oh, that one is, has my water and stuff in it. So let me go on the other side, drop the filter in, and then we'll ride. It was quite an adventure in Home Depot. I mean, like an idiot. Push this down a little. There we go. Like an idiot, I forgot to bring the filter with me. So I had to uh, have them search on the old computer. To uh, find out the correct model number to use for the refrigerator so I can get the correct filter. Usually I bring it with me, but uh, I was out running around and then my wife called me and said, don't forget the filter. So um, I was like, crap, let me just stop at Home Depot real quick and continue my ride. It's kind of early. About, what, what time is it? I know I left the house about eight. So uh, it's now 10. So uh, I still got some more riding to do, but I figured I saw the Home Deep Depot on my travel, so why not just get it taken care of? Let's back out here. Gonna look both ways, even on the bike. Okay. They got a lot of summer stuff that they're putting on sale now, so I know I'll probably go over here and uh, rack up on some stuff for the patio. Get some cushions. This is usually when I buy my grill cleaners and stuff like that, too. You know, they throw all that stuff on sale, they're trying to get rid of it. They never throw grass seed on sale, though. That's always expensive. <laughs> That's never on sale. <laughs> if it's if it's forty nine dollars today, it's forty nine dollars in the winter time. <laughs> but I thought I would uh, share a little story with you today. That's you know I don't know how to take it. Uh, I'm kind of a little upset about it. A little disappointed. I'm not really upset about it. It's disappointing. So, uh, I was at, I was at, um, the supermarket early yesterday morning, uh, probably about nine o'clock. And I usually park away from the other vehicles when I'm on my bike. I don't like, you know, parking in between cars. You never know if someone's going to pull in and, and, and not see your bike and at the last second they hit it or something. So what I try to do is just kind of park the bike in the open. It's easier for me to see if there's someone around the bike or, you know, or something of that. So when I pulled in the stop and shop, it was a local stop and shop. Like I said, I was getting some bread for the baby. He wanted some French toast. So uh, we went shopping the day before, but we forgot the bread. And if the little man wants a little French toast, dad's got to go and get it. He rules that house. I don't care what nobody says. Once you, once you have kids, you lose all control. All control. First you lose it to your wife, and then the kids just take it from both of you. <laughs> and he knows it too. <laughs> we'll get it back one day, but right for now, you know, he, he is the little prince of the house, and uh, he runs it. So uh, I go inside. I'm, I'm in stop and shop. Like, i just... You know, d dueling around. I got the bread in my hand and I'm kind of shopping to see what else is out there. And uh, I come up, uh, I'm coming out, you know, I pay for everything. 
And now I notice there's a another biker, like park not next the space next to my bike, but um, like a, a space. There's a space between us, if you if you would say. So I, you know, I, 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 as I'm walking, I was like, man, he's got a nice bike. You know, that's that's pretty nice. And um, I get up to him and I say hello. He says hi, and he goes, uh, do you like that victory? And I said, yeah, I do. I, I, I like it a lot. And uh, he said, um, you don't like Harley Davidson? And I said, oh, no, I think Harley Davidson's a great bike. Um, but um, I actually test drove a couple of them, but the uh, victory won me over. Uh-oh. Someone's in the old bus there. Uh, hopefully everything will work out for them. So... He, um, what was I saying? Yes. So I said, I, I test drove them all. Um, I test drove uh, the, the Road King, I told him, and the Street Glide. And um, he said, well, what made you get the, um, the victory, the side on it? And I said, well, um, one, I, I just like that retro style. I said, it, I, I, I think it handles really nice when, um, when, uh, you're doing the slow maneuvers and I said also it was a killer deal and he turned to me and said so basically what you're telling me is you bought that victory because you couldn't afford the Harley Davidson and I froze I was like and then my in the back of my mind I was like wait a minute is he trying to snap is he breaking on you and you know being from the Bronx that's the first thing you go for is you're like oh he's trying to disrespect you so um, the younger me would have responded real quick with a, a, a kind of a smart behind response, but the older me just said, "Oh no, I um, said I do like it, uh, but um, you know, it, if when you when I was looking for the bike, great great bike, did some homework on it, and if you can get a great price for it, why not?" So then he replied. Well, you know when you're about to sell the bike, uh, you won't get anything for it. And I said, well, I'm not trying to sell it anytime soon. I said, I plan on keeping this bike for a long time. Uh, he said, well, if you bought that Harley Davidson, then if you would have, then it would have been, you would have got half the resale value or something of that nature. You're trying to say you'd get more for the bike than the victory. Which I know. I mean, everybody knows the Harley Davidsons you can get a good penny for. But the dealers still try to, uh, you know, shortchange you when you're trying to trade trade, trade, trade it in. All the um, automobiles and motorcyclist dealers do that. Now, unless you have something that's so rare, it's going to be, uh, you're going to get robbed when you try to trade it in. So I said, well, you know, since I'm not looking to trade it in right now, I don't mind. It, it's okay as long as uh, I don't drop the bike. I'm happy. That's 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 what I said. So then he he's, he's comparing it. He's like you know he steps back and he's looking at his and he's looking at mine and I I start to look at his because I thought the conversation you know was a, a little on the border of I'm going to say something slick but not. And uh, he says well. What what uh what did he say? What what is the maintenance on this bike? And I said, well, just like any other bike, you know, you got to do the oil changes every uh, I believe it's every three thousand miles, and then you have to check it out. I said, I used to check it out at the end of the white riding season. I have my mechanic. He looks after the bike, and uh, he makes sure it's in top running condition. And he said, did I get it up here? And I said, no, I bought the bike in Connecticut, but I have it serviced here in New York. And then he said, um, well, you, would you uh, trade that in for a Harley? And I said, ah, oh, I don't think so. I said, I, I like the Street Glide. I used to like the Road King. And then he cut me off. He said, well, you know that Road King, I'm sorry, you know that uh, Victory is a knockoff of the Road King. And <laughs> I said, well, they all have that nice classic look. I said, you know, he says, yeah, but they, they, they built that bike to go against the Road King, and the Road King is just killing it in every way. 
and I said, well, I don't know about that. You know, I, I, I never heard no reviews or match up the Road King versus the Road Classic. You know, there's, there's maybe one or two articles on it, but none of them are like, you know, really in depth details on both bikes. They, they, they ride. They, they, I like the Road King. I almost bought one. I told you before that. It, it's just a little too top heavy for me. I, I didn't like the way it was heavy. And I said, well, if it is, you know, they did a good job. And he, he said, well, and then the Harley Davidson, you know, he says, you'll start to get the chips on the bike. He just started going in on my baby. Uh, you know, my baby does me well. I ain't worried. And he's talking about the paint. And then, uh, so I, I, I sit on the bike and I start it up. And, uh, but I'm still talking, you know. So now I don't put the bread in the saddlebag and stuff. And then he, he hears the bike start up and he goes, hey, that sounds like a washing machine or a tractor trailer. And I said, well, I didn't put the pipes on. I said, I'm sure your bike didn't sound all beautiful when you first got it. I'm sure it sounded the same. And he kind of looked at me and I said, well, I, I got to get on out of here. I got to get home and uh, get myself together. Right, pass this guy. He's giving us the room. And he said, well, you know, if you ever decide to uh, get another Harley Davidson, I can recommend uh, a place for you that's, you know, really good and stuff. And I said, well, thank you. Uh, I, I, I know the ones in Kingston and I know the one uh, further down right after the town of Newburgh. I've been to both of them. And he, he said, yeah, they're both uh, like good places and stuff. And he started to go into the Harley um, club and stuff like that. And no lie. No lie, not that I, I, I thought I got the conversation to go back on a good note, you know. And he gets on his bike and he goes, Hey, when you get a better job, maybe you can afford the Harley Davidson you always wanted. I was like, <laughs> I, I saw red. I, I really, really wanted to tell this guy off, but you could tell he was kind of like looking for something to, to argue about. And um, I said, uh, well, maybe if you get a better job, you can afford a victory. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to say something more, but I have to remember, and it, it ran through my mind. Whenever I put these up, my little son is usually sitting on my lap as I edit the videos down. And I don't want to hear, I don't want him to hear me cursing. Um, I usually don't curse a lot. So, um, I, I, I came back with that weak line and I was mad at myself because, let me tell you, being growing up in the Bronx, you learn how to snap. I mean, it's part of, it's part of your, your uh, growth into uh, adulthood. If you, if you don't know how to verbally defend yourself, then you'll get eaten alive in most schools. And I was like, man, I can't believe I came up with that corny line. But I think it shocked him. He, I, I guess he never heard that before. And he, he was like, I can afford a victory three times over. You know, I, uh, my Harley Davidson costs almost $25,000. How about that victory cost? $18,000? It's like, dude, it's a bike. You know, I'm not going to sit here and throw price tags back and forth. And I just said, it costs what it costs. You know, and enjoy your day. And I pulled off. But I was so disappointed, you know, like, you're going to hit me with the, maybe if you get a better job someday, you can afford a Harley Davidson that you always wanted. <laughs> I was like, wow, Man, I could afford any bike I choose. You work hard enough, you can afford anything you choose if you really want it. That's what my parents always told me. Son, if you really want it, work hard and you can get it. So that's why I say it. I can afford anything I choose if I work hard enough to get it. If you're willing to make the sacrifices, then you can afford that Harley Davidson, you can afford that Superbike, you can afford that Ferrari, you can afford this beautiful F-150, you can afford anything you want. You don't have to sit there and uh, break on somebody because you think you know their financial status. I was totally disgusted. Really, really disgusted. Um, it was kind of disappointing too because he was a fellow rider 
and you just want to, you know, you want to have good conversation. You don't want to have any bad conversation about somebody about their vehicle. That's stupid. But that's it, YouTube. I just figured I would share that little story with you. So disappointing. Very disappointing. You know, small-minded people out there, they, they figure if they try to put their financial status, um, throw their financial status in your face. And technically, he doesn't know what I do. He doesn't know my salary. I don't know what he does. I don't know his salary. But I do know this. I'm happy in my life, and I'm happy of the salary and the status that I've accomplished to get me here. You know, going through my stages, I shoveled horse manure, was a cashier, worked with animals, sold retail, worked in corporate America, and I done very well for myself. I, there's never a time that I ever did any criminal activities that I would be ashamed of. So that guy, you know, if you watch YouTube, you know, I, I'm gonna give you the three and you read the sign in the middle because that's for you. So this is crazy cool New Yorker signing off. And as always, ride what you love, and love what you buy. Thank you.